right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to uh, talk about millennial rain. So I do a word search and then I filter it by upload date and I see that 16 hours ago, a YouTuber named Intel that day posted a video called Who Goes into the Millennial Reign of Christ? Isaiah 65, 66, 16. End Times Prophecy. All right, so let me play a little bit of this. Welcome to our study tonight on this subject, the millennial reign. Who goes into the millennial reign? I want to. All right. So that's enough. One thing you notice, he's he's got a sharp looking suit there, got a sharp looking tie, you know, nice haircut, cool glasses. He, he's a great talker, you know. He's authoritative. He's got a finger and he points it. You know, he's a cool guy. He's got a Bible right here, it looks like to me. I don't know what you call that there. Maybe a, a pointer. Uh, he's got a Bible and a pointer and a, and a board with a chart on it. Cool guy. Cool guy, no question about it. Okay, so here's the problem. If you're going to teach Bible prophecy, you ought not be ignorant of what the Bible says. And it's incredible. So let's go over the chart real quick so if you look, consider this on the left hand side the beginning and then the on the far right hand side is the end alright so he's got saved people before Christ okay so here are the three crosses which uh, indicate the death burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ so before that happened the saved according to the chart go their body goes to the grave and their soul goes to Abraham's bosom and then the unsaved their body goes to the grave and their soul goes to some place called Hades and right there that word is a red flag and so is Sheol and Gehenna the red flags. What that tells me is you do not believe in any Bible, in any language, anywhere on the world at any time in human history. You don't believe the Bible at all. That's what that tells me. Not not by itself, but uh, there's no other reason for people to use those words that are not in the Bible other than to demonstrate their lack of faith in the Word of God. Alright, so never mind all that okay so as we continue here we see that uh, Jesus his body went to the grave and then his soul went to Abraham's bosom now that the implication here is or what the chart is telling us is that all the Old Testament saints and Jesus resurrected from the grave or whatever and ascended to heaven all right and so I'm gonna utterly destroy that okay so real quickly uh, what he's got after this uh, after Jesus ascended to heaven he's got the saved their body goes to the grave everybody when they die their body goes to the grave <laughs> but now he's claiming that when our soul goes to uh, heaven and uh, this will get real stupid. All right, so our souls in heaven, and then afterwards the rapture of the church. Um. So it doesn't really make any sense to me at all. Okay, so the obvious problem here is you got two raptures. All right, and uh, that's not supported by the Bible at all. And then apparently all the saved people are up in the air. And all you have left on earth are unsaved people. And they have to go through a, apparently a seven year tribulation, I'm guessing. But I, I think my guess is right. And then you got a thousand year period. So the unsaved people have seven years where it's going to be a little bit tough. But then they'll have a thousand years of utopia. And, but it doesn't matter because they're all going to die. And um, 
it, none of this makes any sense, man. This guy here, Mr. Cool, he got his doctrine from Nicolas Cage and Kirk Cameron and the Hollywood movie called The Left Behind. Now, this, this fits that movie perfectly. The problem is it does not fit the Bible. So let's get into it. All right, so the, you know if it was just this part right here with the um, you know the people going the saved people going into the Abraham's bosom and the unsaved people going into uh, another part where there's a great gulf between the saved and the unsaved that supports what we read in Luke 16 with Lazarus and the rich man where there's uh, the rich man he pleads with Abraham and tells him to uh, go tell his brothers about this great gulf and tell them to believe in God and and Abraham assures them he, he says look they, they've got Moses and the prophets let them hear what they have to say all right and Abraham he says I assure you that even if one arose from the dead they will not believe. All right. So, um, it doesn't, you know. And we obviously we have one that rose from the dead, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. And so this is the where I want to utterly destroy this idea that Old Testament saints have already gone up to heaven. All right. And it's incredible. It. It's as if these guys have never read the Bible. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what the Bible says, you ought not to be teaching it. Period. No matter how cool you look, Mr. Mr. Pointy Finger. No matter how cool you think you are, you ought not to ever teach the Bible if you don't know what the Bible says. This stuff is driving me nuts, man, because... All they're doing, I know, I know what's going on here. These guys aren't reading the Bible. They don't believe in any Bible. They're getting all their doctrines from other men. And this is the world that we're living in. Nobody reads the Bible anymore. You can't tell me anybody that associated with this chart has ever read the Bible. The Bible is crystal clear. That, I mean, I've been over this numerous times no man has ascended to heaven but he that came down here let's go to John chapter 3 oops where am I at? John chapter 3 Jesus says no man has ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven no man alright so only Jesus has ascended to heaven. <laughs> All right, it's incredible, man. We go to First Corinthians 15, and we read it. Um, let's see. Let's. Where do we start here? Um, da, 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 da. In this life only, we have hope in Christ. We are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead? Christ is risen from the dead. What about the Old Testament saints? Mr. Cool's telling us that they all rose from the dead. Not just Christ. He's just one of, one of the fellas. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death by man also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the firstfruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming then comes the end, and we shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all 
enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now, this whole chapter is, is great. But just by what I read there alone, Christ, not... I Look, okay, so... I don't know how ignorant people can... I don't know how people could be so doggone ignorant. Let's see if I can find something here and down here at the bottom of the Bible, you know, if you, if you don't, you know, want to read the whole book, just go to the end and see what happens here. And we see here in Galatians 3, all right, in Galatians 3, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember that verse. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. You see the connection here. All right. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All right. So Abraham's seed is Christ, and if you be Christ, then you're heirs according to the promise. So when Christ returns, that is his coming. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, behold, he comes with clouds. This is the end of the world. All right. And Christ, he has ascended to heaven. And then afterward, those that be Christ, that would include Old Testament saints, Abraham's seed. All right. So you're this that would include everybody that is saved everybody that is saved will be resurrected at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality for when this all happens then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory <laughs> all right and then we go to we can go to first Thessalonians right first Thessalonians 4 and I know I'm making a short video long I get it I'm just ranting ranting because everybody's getting this wrong and drives me nuts so let's go we'll read this real quick for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first the dead in Christ and if you be Christ then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise and every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ all right, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is not 2,000 years apart. This is the same event. The last trump. For the trumpet shall sound with the voice of the archangel. This is the end of the world. This has not happened. The first the dead in Christ. There's only one resurrection. There is only one time that all this is going to take place. It's not two different events, man. What are you talking about? Okay, so he's going to, he claims Old Testament saints. Now, would you agree that David was an Old Testament saint? Well, in Acts 2 verse 34 it says for David 
is not ascended into the heavens. So apparently, according to Mr. Pointyfinger, he's not an Old Testament saint. Because the Bible is very clear that David has not ascended to the heavens. But he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. You catch that? Till I make thy foes thy footstool. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And, of course, you know Genesis 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the... The Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, until I make thy foes thy footstool. And, I mean, we're getting this all over the Bible, Right? And the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. We're getting this all throughout the Bible. And you see me point this out many times before, recently, especially last year or so. In Revelation 20, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. All right, when this happens, so then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. This is all happening at the end of the world. And David has not ascended to heavens. All right, he'll, he'll ascend to the heavens, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's when David will ascend to heaven, at the end of the world. Nobody has ascended to heaven except for Christ. Every man in his own order. First Christ, then those who are Christ at his coming. So David has not yet ascended to heaven. And this guy does not know the Bible at all. And this is simple stuff, man. And this is this is all throughout the Bible. This is what I don't get, man. You're pretending to be an expert and you don't know what the Bible says. It drives me nuts. All right, that's all.